<coughs> the word of God is Allah and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Say to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that endeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As we are answering back the series concerning the point over the debate whether my Lord Jesus Christ was really crucified on the cross or not, when as such a failure on the part of the unprepared pastor, Pastor Henry Rockadin, who doesn't even know what exactly is the word of the truth from the virgin language of the scriptures, trying to debate with such kind of a dichotomy person who is spiritually dead, who doesn't even have a logical sequence of understanding of Bible doctrine. He claims to the fact that Lord Jesus Christ was not crucified, and he says that he has proved it from his Quran as well as from the Bible, and that Lord Jesus Christ was not at all being crucified. The people who are not able to realize this truth as such, millions and millions of Muslim believers who are following such kind of a cult, who doesn't even know what exactly is preaching, which shows his mind, his thoughts of understanding is to that extent itself. The people are in a very dangerous stage of eternal hell. If they are alive, even after hearing to the tape after 10 years or after 20 years, let them recheck this data in the YouTube and consider it. Lord Jesus Christ is the only unique fountain of our rock, who is the only savior of our eternal life. And he is the one only God who has come in the form of an hypostatic union and he has been termed as monogene in the Greek and apart from his there is no savior the only thing the difference between him is he is a creator but he is not a creature do not put your eye on a creator one and one eye on the creature try to make your mind very clear make your light very clear and that light is not possible for you until and unless you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ which is an evolution issue for you as an unbeliever in the Lord that you have to believe upon Lord Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone and apart from that there is no way no other chance that you think you can get the things or you can understand the things Zakirnaik being spiritually dead I know even you Muslim peoples do follow the Torah if you know how to follow the Torah in the Torah you have your Ten Commandments and in the Ten Commandments you have honor your father and mother do not follow Zakirnaik but at least follow the law the law says you have to honor your father and mother if your father Abraham wherein you are United Arab Amorites has come into position because of the things with Abraham and Keturah, Abraham and Hagar, then you will surely realize your father, your origin of Muslim nation is none other but Abraham. And this Abraham himself believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ to credit into his account for the righteousness wherewith Lord has created him and that and then he was been reckoned and he was been totally saved. And that if it is your father then you also should honor your father and mother as per the law of the Torah which was given to you. And if your honor is not to believe upon your father's God, then you do not know how to honor your parents. That's what your original parents of your father and mother known as Abraham, either through Keturah or through Hagar. And that through Hagar is Ishmael, and through Keturah the other five people where the entire United Arab, Arab Emirates have been formed. But the problem here is whether you follow and you put your trust in this man who has only breath in his nostrils, or you follow the word of the Lord which has been given to you, because the first five books, Pentateuch, which you call as Torah, that has been very clearly given for us in the Bible through through Moses, so that we can have the freedom code, the spiritual code, and even as such, the divine establishment code for our living on this world. If you believe that law, and if that law has, there is only one Lord which you also believe, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Akkad, that Lord Jesus Christ is the only one Lord which has been revealed to this human mankind, because to resolve the angelic conflict, right from the prior of positive evolution, from Adam till to the form of an Till to the fall of Adam and Eve, we know very well Lord Jesus Christ was teaching them doctrine in a perfect environment. That was the need for them not to have a scripture in their hand because Lord himself who became flesh later in later dwelt among us was the word of the truth to them and he was teaching them what exactly is that that have to follow but eve was indifferent to bible doctrine with the ignorance of her with the arrogant nature of her she wanted to know what god was like so she went and she made a fellowship with that 
serpent known as Nakash in the Hebrew. And this serpent deceived, beguiled the Eve and stating to the fact, saying that God doesn't want you all to become like God. So you please eat that fruit. You will realize what exactly it is. And when she ate the fruit, she wanted to know what she was. And she lost the glory of body wherewith Lord, Lord, Lord clothed with her, which is called as the things of resurrection body in the, in the future time, which we can sustain. But the body wherewith they have been created, she lost that and she could found that she was naked. And when she found she was naked, as usual when Adam came, he saw and he lusted over her flesh and he wanted to have the things with her. So he ate the fruit and they both had. And the solution for their nakedness was realized when they tried to cover with the fig leaves. And that fig leaves is what these religions are doing in today's world. In today's entire religion heads, they are following the fig leaves pattern to cover their nakedness. The nakedness can never be covered until and unless they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Every person who is born into the meiosis of male and female, irrespective of even the one who is breeded Christian or a professed Christian is born in spiritually dead nature. And when he reaches the conscious state of God consciousness, he has to say that taking a decision of positive evolution towards Lord Jesus Christ, he becomes a trichotomous in nature, possessing body, soul, and human spirit. And that's not possible by any other member in the slave market of sin, like this Prophet Muhammad, or Buddhism, or Pantheism, or Deism, or any religion, you name it, or Hinduism, any God you think you are performing, you are not having any of your spiritual phenomena, but rather you are wasting your life in the things which are quite useless for you, because you do not know the truth and you have been obscured of the truth because you are spiritually dead and the Bible demands a spiritual discernment, spiritual phenomena, spiritual aliveness, spiritual vigilance, spiritual vigor to understand the truth, to take grace into option and show forth holiness in our lives as we treat. And this new kinekatesis wherewith you have been called in the spiritual realm of Lord Jesus Christ. We are the new spiritual species, new of a kind in this unique dispensation of the church age. Every believer having the unique privilege and unique opportunity being indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit which was not in the Old Testament times. We have been much more privileged to give and show forth our gospel through witnessing through ambassador work and we we have to show forth the duty kept up on our shoulders for our pastor teacher only to a male believer by rightly dividing the word of truth from the original language of the scriptures, namely the procedure called as ICE concept. I standing for isagogics, C standing for categorical, and E standing for exegesis. And when you show forth the mechanics, it is not of the greatest warning messages that are great, great but it is the mechanics wherewith you teach to them. That is, a dichotomous person who is Zach and Reich and the followers of him will end up in hell because Satan is waiting like a roaring lion to devour as much as it can or snatch it out as much as it can to the fire. But when return, we have been told in the book of Jude to snatch as many as people out of the fire by giving them the gospel. So our duty for them is to tell, to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, become trichotomous in nature from dichotomy because you possess only body and soul. If you have only body and soul, there is no way the spiritual phenomena or the imputation of eternal life could be given to you until unless Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation, creates in you that human spirit, wherewith that human spirit is capable of taking that eternal life when the moment of salvation, when you believe upon Lord Jesus Christ's gospel, and He is the only Lord. And apart from it, whatsoever gimmicks you are trying to follow by your religion works, circumcising on the eighth day or circumcising after you become mature is no way concerned because all those dead all those deeds are dead works are ritual works in the sight of the Lord and Lord has seized them because Christ has put an end to the law as told in Colossians 2 14 he has nailed it to the cross now we have only one thing faith alone in Christ alone and we have been told it is not by works that you will be saved so that you can boast it is by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone you shall be saved. Even as such, after believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no such kind of a ritual works as baptism, or doing goodism, or living a moral life, wherewith we will be having the exemplification of the fifth phrase, I am thirsty, in the fifth point, that is showing forth the Christian way of life by doing social good, or human good, or moral good works, you shall be saved. No way. By instant faith, that moment itself, you shall be having that baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, united into the royal family of God, being 
sink as water, as ship sinks into the water, so you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, through a positive volition, you are sinked into the royal family of God, and there is none who can separate you, as told in Romans 8, 38 and 39, not even the love of God can separate you, because now you are a friend of God, and Lord honors you because of Lord Jesus Christ's work on the cross clad in human nature in a filial one, anthropomorphically changed. And this is what the people fail to realize, that they think by the fig leaves, as Adam and Eve covered the shaken of their nakedness, of their shame, they think by their good deeds they can cover, and no manner how well you think you are performing, you can never understand. Because you do not even know what is the concept of salvation, because by faith alone in Christ alone, Lord has graciously provided through the revealed member of the Trinity, number one, right from Adam till Eve, the Lord Jesus Christ, and then the second person of the Trinity in the form of a Christophany and Theophanies, and then the incarnate Christ, and after resurrection we have the resurrected Christ, and in the millennium we have the returning Christ. It is Lord Jesus Christ only who has been revealed to us, and we have been told He is the only Savior, and that's a dogmatic fact. No matter every person who has been born through the meiosis of a male or female has never given such kind of an assurance as such my Lord Jesus Christ has gave to this dying and perishing world to believe upon Him, they shall be saved. And apart from that, no matter whatsoever debate you are rising with such kind of a dead person, first thing Pastor Rackerton should note that he is spiritually dead, and no man can communicate if he is physically dead, even as such spiritual phenomena can never be communicated to a person who is spiritu spiritually dead. Until and unless first he believes upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and if he is under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as in this new dispensation of the church age, we have the priorities changed, because given a privilege of a royal priesthood, we have to confess our sins directly to God the Father. In the Old Testament time, under the law, every head of the family was the family priest. When he was proposed, the promise of perfect obedience was that Israel should unto do the kingdom of priests. But many of the people, they violated the law and the, and the priesthood was being totally changed. And here we do not have the high priest yearly once entering into the Holy of the Holies for the sake of the sins. But here we have our new royal high priest who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ once and for all being paid for full. Now the duty of the New Testament believer priest is in threefold. Number one, a sacrifice that is who offers a threefold sacrifice that is number one his own living body as a sacrifice unto Christ that meant to say not burning but burning by learning and knowing the knowledge of truth now, apart from knowing and learning the knowledge of truth you do not know how to get your things done and number two he is there to get praise and glorification to God which is the fruit of his lips that make mention of the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be offered continually. That's what in everything you thanks says First Thessalonians 5.19. And that is not only a thing. In everything, in our word, in our deed, in our freeing of life, we have to be very particular under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to offer our continual praise unto Lord. And number three, what he has been as a sacrificer, to sacrifice his substance, that is the gift of administration and the gift of health. Many of the people fail to do this, but we have in Romans 12.13, as per the necessary of the demands for the believers are there. If you belong to your royal family of God, if you have been given that privilege, your duty is to show forth the gift of administration by showing forth in life. By what such kind of a gifts, by such kind of a priesthood has been quite easily given to every believer at the moment of salvation. What is the purpose of that? What is the believer's objective in life? Why he has been given so great privileges of indwelling, controlling power, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that his communication could be very effective when he's preaching to such kind of a reckless, senseless, extravagant moron who doesn't even know how to read the context of the Bible, far less he thinks he can debate over the point that Lord Jesus Christ was not really crucified. If he would have read those passages, what has been quoted, if he would come, even for few of the verses down, which has been recorded around five or six verses, he would easily realize why those things were been clearly recorded. But he doesn't even have that eye of an enlightenment because we know he's spiritually dead. Even as such, he doesn't even have an eye of his physical realm to look in depth, or even if it doesn't have that logical reasoning, then he's totally out of the context. That's what many of the people fail when they believe such kind of a Zakir Nayak or Sheikh Ahmad or any religion head who thinks that even Bible is also one of the religion. No way, no chance at all. Bible is not at all a religion and never it is a religion. Bible 
is a Christian relationship wherewith you have a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, with God the Father. Because of Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross and believing upon Him, you shall have eternal life. And this relationship has been given to you, and this faith has been shown to you, so that Christianity is not a religion, it is a relationship with God the Father through His only begotten Son on, who died on the cross, so that believing upon Him, we shall be saved. And these things, many of the religion heads fail to understand stand and they consider Christianity is also one of our religion and they think all roads lead to Rome so they shall be saved you come by Christianity we come by Hinduism you come by Muslimism no way no chance at all the only way for you a caption is wrong majority of the people are rarely right even in fact if you compare 99 percent of the people are utterly wrong if the majority has been considered and in today's Christendom of a ruined state of hypocritical one war with you find majority of the people being sheer rot of a lie many of the people they don't want to give time for Bible doctrine but rather they want to give time for such kind of a miracles healings or tongues or speaking around jumping around and falsely calling themselves to look into the prophecy where with that prophet prophet tells that if he is a pastor first and foremost he considers himself as a prophet and he says that I am a prophet so I'm telling to you you shall have such and such prosperity all those things even one jackass calls himself as an apostle he says that I have the gift of an apostle what a sheer rot of a lie it is and a blasphemy to this Christendom believers who do not even know the difference of the pre-canon period spiritual gifts and the post-canon period spiritual gifts if that could be discerned dispensationally then they could realize what majority of the people they are doing and following and what sort of a thing it is wrong if anyone who has been healed it will be done by Lord God the Holy Spirit when they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ at that moment itself and it is a fact of such in healing or miracles or things are not been performed to the believing sect but it is for a sign of an unbelieving sect and even as such they are been also totally been seized and if any pastor who prays and he thinks that he has a gift of healing or miracle that is a lie because satan controls him and he makes that believer to be void of bible doctrine and look on and to hang around such kind of a miraculous gifts and he thinks that he shall be edified and he shall look into the doctrine no way he thinks he has the things right and is following and he rises a cult and that's the majority of the people who are following and the majority of the people in this today's christendom are wrong Though they are Protestants or the pagan worships known as Romans, they are absolutely wrong. They may be happy with their things. When Apostle Paul was walking on the road, when his orphan fell on them, they were totally healed. That was a sign of apostleship showed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, towards the believing sect, towards the towards the people who were there and who believed upon Apostle Paul and they were and believed upon his doctrine of Apostle Paul and they believed upon Lord Jesus Christ, they were saved. And it is not for a fact that you organize a place and you call the people to come there. No way. If you want to do your miracular healing as such, if you have really that power, why can't you go to the government hospitals hospitals where there are millions and millions of people who are just rottening in their sickness and in their disease? Jesus. Why do you want to call them to the only oriented place you call? Why, if Apostle Paul was walking on the way and when his orphan fell, people were healed and where is the power of your healing or miracles when you think that you can heal them? Go to the government hospitals and heal them. Not organize such kind of a big crusade and call yourself as jackasses in the sight of the Lord, far less trying to these people to be deceived with your false doctrines. Majority of the people are rarely right. If you consider the real statistics, you will, you will find that if 7 lakh or 7 millions of the people are following these miracles or healings, you will find only 1% of it following Bible doctrine. That is the reverse strategy of today's Christendom. Bible doctrine was been emphasized even in the 15th century to preach the truth from exegesis. That's why we Protestants came out protesting to stand forth for Bible doctrine. The 17th century, we had William Carey coming to India. The 18th century, we have the Plymouth Brethren rising from the editor known as William Kelly, who are there in this century now. If you have been as a key person to this century, then what in your pulpit you are preaching? Are you preaching exegesis? Are you preaching categorical? Or are you preaching isagogical background? Or in return, you are replacing that with your emotional cultism. 
if you compare the ratio for 7 lakh 7 million to 700 you just imagine how many people are being void of biblical truth the status quo should be totally reversed 7 million people should follow Bible doctrine and 700 people, that is, one person could follow to this cult of miracles, healings, or tongues. When that will change, when the pulpit changes its order of preaching, when it gives top priority for biblical truth, thought from the ice concept. Until and unless you change, the believer's objective in his life is never known, and the love of God through the attainment of spiritual maturity can never be known and can never be learnt. To know Lord's mind, you have to have considering observation of Him. Yes, this is what you have in the Lord's mind. And how do you consider? That's why you have been told to meditate. How do you consider? How do you meditate upon Him? How you attain that knowledge if you do not have time to learn and to grow up and be edified in biblical truth? You may think by a sign of a miracle, Lord can change your negative volition to positive volition and you will be fully edified in Bible doctrine. Do not ever consider it as your fact. The word of the truth is alive and powerful. Until unless your volition changes from negative to positive, until and as you have time to learn Bible truth, until and as you can discern what exactly the word of the truth tells to you, you can never know what is Lord's objective in your life for praising Him to the maximum as one of your sacrifice of living body. That is what, number one, you give your body as a living sacrifice unto Christ, and number two, you have to give a praise of continual praise to my Lord through your lips for maximum glorification. And that praise is effective out of the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Do not replace the word of the truth with such kind of a sure art of majority following. And do not follow the majority because of today's apostasy, which is to the heretic to the core. Concepts in Bible doctrine have been totally replaced. The order of the worship has been totally changed. The synagogue's plan to preach a sermon from 2 to morning, morning 6 to 10, and then 10 to 2, and then 2 to 6, a gap, and again night 6 to 10. Four hours of service was constant doctrine. But today's service, if you consider it is for two hours, a one and a half an hour to the maximum two and a half an hour. And you replace doctrinal teaching with your Christian activisms or social Christian church activities, like taking offering, praying, dancing, jumping, music, and not giving top priority for the pulpit to preach exegesis in the Word. And you take half an hour to 45 minutes and you call, the time is more, we can't preach more than that, because the committee has told me to stop exactly by half an hour. The committee has told me to stop by ending by 45 minutes my sermon. Where will the church be edified? How will you learn the truth? And in contrary, if you have the miracle healing program, then you want those things to be continued for two to three hours. And you call that you're healing the believers who the hell wants to be healed if he's a believing sect. It is the word of the truth that should be used to heal them. It is not any other substitute from the word of the Lord. If you give it, that is satanic to the core. Lord Jesus Christ has sandwiched this church age between the first advent and second advent of my Lord to build purely upon Bible doctrine. Not upon such kind of a false deception and defunct use of spiritual gifts which are totally seized after the completion of canon of scripture. The ratio for 7 million people towards 700 is not a ratio to be for Bible doctrine. Bible doctrine should be followed by 7 million people, and 700 people should look into such kind of a miracles and healing sect. Because this 700 people also should be transformed to zero. When they learn that Bible doctrine only is the way for have a permanent healing and permanent miracle. Not ever is been designed your miracles or healings before the pre-canon period to remove your suffering. But 
miracles or healings have been given so that you can know and believe upon the sign of messiahship when he was there in this pre-incarnate world to serve and to fulfill the purpose of the Lord and while he was doing that miracles or signs he was telling to them how much more you fail to discern me from Bible doctrine. If you are not able to discern me from Bible doctrine, then at least believe me because of these resuscitations what have been done to you. But people failed. And then he says, to this evil generation, no sign will be given apart from a sign of Jonah, the three days and the three nights, and which has to be a good Wednesday, not a good Friday, and Pastor Rakedin failed to represent that. If that is the case, to discern the truth, how much more we are in this Christendom of today's 20th century after our resurrection of my Lord. Are we still terminating from that 700 to 70, only 70 people for Bible doctrine? Or you want to transform from 700 to 7 million people? The choice is yours. If you give top priority for biblical truth, we can come and put an end to such kind of a miracles, healings or tongues and replace the pulpits with the revival of exegesis. And if you fail to give your positive volition to learn the truth, if you fail to submit to learn Bible doctrine, then how you can resist the devil. You have to submit yourself, that is your positive volition, to sit and study and be edified in biblical truth. Until and unless you submit, that's what the same passage in 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, or 10.5 says, be prepared. Until and unless you are not prepared, you do not know how is it possible for you to get the things done. If you are a failure in the sight of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you may be a 100% eminent, profound man passing out with your flying colors in the sight of this world as a great miracular, as a great healer, as a great follower for your sheer arts of teaching in morality. But as far as, as my Lord is concerned and his doctrine is concerned, if once if you cross-check, you will really judge yourself what you are following is right or wrong. Lord Jesus Christ commanded through Apostle Paul, through Apostle Peter, submit them to the grace and to the word of the Lord which is able to build them up. Through Peter, he said, go in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They didn't say, submit to grace and to the miracles or healings, they shall be grown up. No way. They didn't say, grow in grace and in the miracles of our Lord and Savior. No way. The scripture in their dying declaration very eminently gave priority for Bible doctrine. The same thing which my Lord told to them when they were dull of hearing. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And then he has even told to them, you should have discerned me by the thoughts of learning from Bible doctrine, not by looking into these miracles. But even you have failed to discern me, because though you have failed, number one, in the failure of your apostasy in the Israel age for doctrine, and number two, though I have done these miracles, you have failed to believe upon me that I am the Messiah. Then how much more? You will learn about me, even after if I go. That's why I'm sending you the paraclete guide. We shall get you into remembrance of all the things that I've spoke. But give top priority for Bible doctrine in a very simple manner of principle. In John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. And the prayer for the church age in John 17, 17, sanctify them with thy word, thy word. Sanctify them through the truth. The truth is thy word. How much more clear evidence we require that we have to exegue my in Bible doctrine and Bible teaching in the pulpits. It is not for your sheer art of oration, jumping around, screaming around and saying that this is morality. We have to live a life of morality. But if you cross check with an unbeliever, the unbeliever who is going to go to hell is far more superior morally than a believer who is going to heaven in a superior morally. Christian has been called to show for the Christian virtues not the morality standards of life wherewith the other religion people live very well morally than you. Why is the difference between you and them? You have been given the controlling power, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you believe upon the Lord to show forth, to treat, and to give eternal solutions. 
not the temporary solutions of your morality. These have been like just your UKG and your LKG when you learn. The morality has been got, gone out. You have been called for your PhD teaching. And if you say that I am still in the lower KG, if not the upper KG, then I will be fine. You did not even make your standard for the first one. Far less you think you pass 10th and then go for your intermediate and then go for your degree and then go for your post-graduation and then finish up your doctrinal thesis, which is PhD. You have that status only when you give top priority for Bible doctrine. These miracles or healings were childish things, the childish things which have been put away. But now we have the permanent thing which has to be accompanied by the gift of love. But if you have love, if you have love towards your congregation in your pulpit, then show forth your love by doing the things of exegetical, categorical, or isagogical study in your subject. And we have been noticing the things from yesterday's tape, particularly the dispensations. And why is the dispensation? So that the people can realize the importance of the objective where with life, in the life of spiritual realm, the believer being kept alive. The believer's objective in life is to know and love God through the attainment of spiritual maturity. How does the believer reach this assigned objective? He makes a decision to renovate his mind in order to think with the mind of Christ. In other words, he consistently learns and metabolizes Bible doctrine. Doctrine in his soul produces spiritual momentum and the capacity to love God, to execute his plan and to serve him while defending against the unrelenting assaults of the angelic conflict. The knowledge of God becomes a protective fortress against the determined angelic antagonists. Satan, in search of victim, carefully absorbs church-age believers. The, belie the devil is the most powerful creature in the universe, yet he is not omnipotent, because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. Neither he is omnipresent. Although he skillfully commands a vast and highly organized army of demons involved in unceasing worldwide operations, these hostile forces conduct reconnaissance and execute schemes that disguise the truth and distract believers. How is Satan's agenda targeted against believers in the most insidious ways? He lures Christians into the cosmic system by appealing to the trends of the sin nature and by using deceptively cunning forms of direct influence in the believer's life. That has, will be made through the apostate teachers who are using a failure for the importance of Bible truth for the fifth phrase, I am thirsty. And these are the agents of Satan who do not teach the exegesis in the pulpit. The very clearly Satan and cunningly uses them and divides them because it wants them to be hindered because it wants them not to learn the truth but rather tell them miracles healings or tongues is the greatest criteria in life rather than following and performing the things which are quite which are quite necessary for us for our spiritual growth against our adversity adversary we as believers are never commanded to go on the offensive we are in no way authorized to attack satan's forces we are not to run around trying to get rid of demons, bind or rebuke Satan, or eradicate his influences in the world around us. We are not capable. The incarceration of Satan will only be accomplished by Christ upon his return at the second advent, as told in Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. The New Testament epistles write to instruct church-age believers on every aspect of the Christian life, contain no mandates or instructions for casting out demons. Offensive action, the authority to cast out the demons, was a divine prerogative temporarily delegated to only a few during the time of the apostles as told in Mark 3.15. Furthermore, this power from God must not be confused with the bogus pagan ritual of exorcism alleged to evict demons by means of uttering religion's oath. Christian activism is another example of taking the offensive against Satan and his cosmic system. These actions are not Christ-centered, but man-centered. They are motivated by the idea that social engineering and protesting sometimes to the point of violence can eliminate evil from the devil's world. Christianity is not spread by activism, but by legalism. Activists think they are solving problems, but what they are doing, they are destroying human volition, imposing themselves on others. They deny individuals the freedom 
freedom either to succeed or to fail. Such attempts are contrary to the will and the plan of God and are never part of the spiritual life. The mission of defeating demons and their influence belongs strictly to the word of Lord. We must avoid the arrogance of assuming a power that we do not possess. The influence, the mission of defeating demons and their influence belongs strictly to God the Father. We must avoid the arrogance of assuming a power that we do not possess. Victory over Satan's operation cannot be attained by magic formulas or, incant or incantations, by human works or self-effort. We were created inferior in strength and power to the angels, including Satan and his fallen legion. But positionally in Christ, we are superior than these angels. On our own, apart from God's grace provision, we are too weak to counter the craft and power of this superior fuel. But we have the indwelling controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which could control us when we are being in the spiritual phenomena. We can be easily controlled rather than this superior fuel which has been in our midst to devour us. Our protection comes from the indwelling and controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit through maintaining our usabaya, which is our spiritual life. Only defensive action against Satan is effective, utilizing the power of God to defend ourselves in the order of the day for the church age. Submit therefore to God, resist, which is anesthemia, the devil, and he will flee from you, as told in James 4.7. There are two divine commands in this verse, the one is submit and the two is resist. Our only legitimate offensive action is to submit to God by consistent cognition and inculcation of Bible doctrine. Our defensive weapon mandate from God is to resist, which is the application of metabolized Bible doctrine to life. The Greek verb anesthemia, which is translated resist, means to stand your ground against and confirms our defensive position, posture. In a military context, anesthemia cannot so strongly entrench the position fortified with the principles of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. We are equipped to stand our guard, our ground against the devil and his troop. God promises in James 4, 7 that Satan will free from those who utilize divine protection. And even in the first book of Peter, God stresses the importance of sustaining our defenses. Saying in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert, your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but be resistant, that is anesthemia, hold your ground against him firm in your faith, which are learned through Bible doctrine. To resist the devil and his demons, we are given two more commands, to be of sober spirit and to be on alert. Number one, we have to submit. Number two, we have to resist. And the commands given by this Peter, we have to be of sober mind and we have to be alert. What is sober? Sober, the Greek in nepho, which means vigilant or stabilized, to be aware, well-balanced, self-possessed under all circumstances. And this Nepo, to be stabilized, to be aware, or to be stabilized, that is particularly well-balanced or self-possessed under all circumstances is not possible until or unless you give each and every thought captivity unto Christ. And that captivity unto Christ can be bought your each and every thought you think only when you know Bible doctrine because whenever you think a thought, it has to go through the judgment scale of Bible doctrine, which is mind of Christ, which is Lord Jesus Christ. And if the judgment scale says, what about like the Ark of Covenant being into two parts, the one of justice, the one of righteousness, the two cherubs, what the integrity of my Lord demands. And that, if it says right, and that could be in written cross check with Bible doctrine, because Bible doctrine is the only way which can form you that Ark of the Covenant in your mind. And that Ark of the Covenant, which will be formed in your mind, will say, yes, this is right, you can accept it. And if it says no, you have to reject it. That's how we can get the thought of captivity into our Christ. And that thought can never be bought until unless you do not know Bible doctrine. You may say, I don't know what is that, and how could I take this decision? That's what you have been told to learn Bible doctrine, which is a simplified answer to learn the objective of God's maximum glorification in this world. Until and unless you learn Bible doctrine, you do not have that knowledge. No matter how well you think you can perform, it is a sure rut of a lie and of a blasphemy because you can never be stabilized, as told in the Greek, nepo, to be sober. You can never be aware, you can never be vigilant, or you can never be well balanced, and you can never be self possessed of all circumstances. The only thing which David did, he commanded everything unto the sight of the Lord. What everything we as believers have to do to get every thought into captivity of Christ. Only when we learn 
Bible doctrine. The Greek verb nepho denotes a stabilized mentality, free from mental attitude sins. It is this sound-mindedness, this orientation to divine viewpoint that keeps us vigilant and to the alert, wide awake and prepared for an enemy probe. Satan and his evil forces are relentless. Though they flee in the presence of a strong defense, they repeatedly return for another shot at riding and harassing, hoping to catch us in an unguarded position. If you are not guarding yourself with Bible doctrine, and if you are guarding yourself with this deception and defunct of small spiritual gifts, which are out of the completed canon of scripture, then you are in an unguarded position, and Satan will definitely put a ride and harass, hoping to catch you. Even when you are, when the greatest warrior, Lord Jesus Christ, decisively defeated Satan's temptation in the wilderness, the devil departed for him only until an opportunate time, as told in Luke 4 13. We must never go to sleep at our guard posts, lest we give the devil an opportunity to take us by surprise. That's why I've been told we always constantly filled up the spirit, never even give your thoughts of desire to the flesh, because when you walk out of the spirit, your desire of your your flesh will be fulfilled and when you become a carnal believer or reverse mystic believer the things that you're doing is a sure rut of a blasphemy in the sight of the Lord because you grieve and squelch the Lord God the Holy Spirit but rather we have been mandated to be aware to be in guard to be alert to be stabilized to be well balanced in Bible doctrine encouragement for our warfare against Satan is found in 1 John 4 4 where we are told greater is he that is Lord God the Holy Spirit who indwells in us who is in you than he that is Satan who is in this world withstanding Satan's assaults demands dependence on God who has provided spiritual armor and weaponry for every one of us to which God provides that which God provides has no weakness Clothed in divine power and protection, we can face the complexities of the devil's world from a position of strength as opposed to a position of human weakness armed with emotion and ineffective activisms. The position of strength for a humanism is their emotion. That's what the miracles, healings, or jumping crowd of Pentecostal are doing because of that 7 million people who are following that. And 700 people are these who have made up their divine protection and divine power, which is Bible doctrine, as their position of strength. Only by utilizing our God-granted spiritual resources, we can resist the satanic forces and that spiritual resource what lord has given is bible doctrine that's why it has been told in james 4 7 submit yourself to the lord and you can resist the devil the lord is bible doctrine once again to quote submit therefore to god and resist the devil and he will flee from you and these are the things which are quite essential the objective wherewith you can be edified in these things you can grow up to that status quo and that is the reason we have been told the dispensations with accurate accuracy and dividing of the word of the truth will make you to give proper importance of your priesthood that you can give as a living sacrifice unto God wherein you have been offered for your lips to give Praise continually unto the Lord, and we have been told to divide your substance among the believers as well, so that you shall know the truth, and you shall be a true example of a Christian, because Christ gave his life for us, what we are giving as believers to this dying and perishing world. Are we giving them Bible doctrine? If you are a pastor teacher, or if you are an evangelist, are you giving them the gospel, which is your primary responsibility kept up on your, kept up on your shoulders, and responsibility demands our relationship, a relationship which demands the duties to be done wherewith you have been obtained or been ordained. If you are a pastor teacher like a bond slave, you have that duty. And if you are an evangelist like a bond slave, you have the duty to show forth the gospel. And if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, as an ambassador of my Lord, you are there to show forth the witnessing power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the gospel when you are faithfully prepared until unless you are not been faithfully prepared when you do not know that you have been constructed your edification complex of the soul 
you can never have that. That's why we have been told to look into the things of Lord first, that is to set your minds upon above, that is upon Bible doctrine, and then you can walk your manner. And that's not possible until and unless you are always under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And since the tape has been too long, we shall come back and look after the prayer of rebound, the subject concerning the dispensations, wherewith the only key for us to understand the purpose of the objective upon the fifth phrase wherewith we are answering in depth to the Christians as well as to the scholars as well as to the pastors as well as to the believers to give top priority for Bible doctrine so that this learnt Bible doctrine can make the defensive against such kind of a powerful fear so that until and unless we know the doctrine we are not been power in a position of strength of divine one far less we try to do the things in our human energy and these things can never be done can never be attained can never be got into consideration because we are failures pastor rocker didn't fail to be prepared to tell them that he was a dichotomy in person and then to he went for the debate and he was a failure but we should not be that we should be prepared we should tell not only to this people but even to the entire world that lord jesus christ is the only one when we get each and every thought of ours into the captivity of christ and formulate and change it and once again get skilled get weighed into the values of our Lord of Bible doctrine and come back and make it a treating of manner through learning Bible truth. And these things can never be attained until unless you have your positive volition. And as today's tip, we have been covering about the times and epochs, which is Kairos and Kronos, and ages and administrations, which is, uh, which is Aeon and Academia. And these things we shall look after coming and looking into the word of prayer in the privacy of our priesthood by confession of our sins through 1 John 1 9 so that Lord God the Holy Spirit could enlighten us and get back the things which are essential for us to for for us to give as a sign of eternal glory each and every word we speak because each and every word we speak should not be just wasted but it should be reflecting the eternal solution of Lord's character Lord's integrity and Lord's maximum glorification so in the privacy of our priesthood we shall have a word of prayer and today we shall look some of the things concerning the theocentric dispensation of the of the israel particularly the things with zach and mike quotes from Ezekiel chapter 18 who is not even aware what was the age of israel but we shall give him some of the uniqueness of the dispensation of the israel age if the time permits to a long tape then we shall continue with tomorrow but in the review of such where when we have been considering the Kairos and Kronos, Kairos and Kronos, and Eon Ichodomia, wherein God demands a plan, an order, an arrangement of the things, not chaos, confusion, and disarrangement of the things. While with dispensation gives us a clear perspective of a view of understanding what is the objective of believer in this world, which has been kept alive even after his salvation, so that he can reach the status of maximum glorification unto Christ only through Bible doctrine. So we shall have a word of prayer and look into the subject. We thank you, Father, for the privilege that you have given to us to have fellowship with you to the word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things that we are going to study, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified, and each and every word we speak could be eternally recorded and kept unto thee, so that we could stand firm and say, a workman that reads not to be ashamed, the one rightly divides the word of truth. And that's not possible for any believer until and unless the believer being, gift, gift, being given gift, gift of a male pastor teacher who is faithfully and consistently prepared from your words and languages and handles your word accurately. So, Father, as we continue this in the theocentric dispensation, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So the things which I have been looking into consideration of previous tape regarding the Kairos or Kronios or other things. But today, the brief outline, outline of the dispensation considering the theocentric dispensation, the Christocentric dispensation, and the dispensation of the eschatological events. But we being the Christocentric dispensations should have information, particularly some of the back dispensation about the theocentric, wherewith the age of the Gentiles divided into positive evolution, the negative evolution, and the Jewish patriarchs. In the outline of the history in the previous two tapes, if you could look the theocentric dispensation for the age of the positive evolution was 
taken from Genesis 1 to Exodus 11, and then, uh, sorry, the entire age of this dispensation of the Gentiles, of the theocentric dispensation, and the dispensation of the Israel subdivided into three parts in the Gentiles, and subdivided into five parts in the dispensation of the Israel, we have from Genesis 1 to Exodus 11, the dispensation of the Gentiles, where in the age of post evolution from the creation of Adam till to the fall of man, that is Genesis 1 26 to Genesis 3 6. From the age of negative evolution, we have from the fall of man to Abraham, Genesis 3 7 to Genesis 11 32. The age of Jewish patriarchs from Abraham to Exodus under Moses from, Gen from Genesis 12 to Exodus 11. And the dispensation of the Israel we have from Exodus until the birth of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which ranges from 1441 to 4 BC, and from Exodus 12 to the last book of Malachi. And this again divided into five parts, the theocentric kingdom from Exodus to Samuel from 1441 to 1020 BC, the United Kingdom from Seoul to Rahobam from 1020 to 926 BC, the Northern Kingdom from Jeroboam to Hosea 926 to 721 BC, the Southern Kingdom from Rehoboam to Jedekiah 926 to 586 BC, the restorated king nation of Judah from Nehemiah to Christ which is from 516 to 4 BC. And today we are exemplifying the post evolution war with the age of the Gentiles which have been divided from Genesis 1 to Exodus 11. The dispensation of the Gentiles encompass three subdivisions, which is post evolution, negative evolution, and the Jewish patriarchs. The age of past evolution involved only two members over an intermediate length of time, which is Adam and Eve. And after their fall, how the things went happen, considering they lived in perfect environment in the Garden of Eden. They received direct revelation from God when the deity of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is revealed member of the Godhead as told in John 1, 1 through 4, Hebrews 1, 1 3, walked with them in the evenings, especially in Genesis 3, 8. No written canon of scripture was needed, nor was there need of salvation because man had yet not fallen. The historical record of this period is found in Genesis 1 to 3 to 6, written retrospectively by Moses under the inspiration of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who ensured the perfect accuracy of the record in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. If the Muslims also believe the five things of the Torah of the book, they are also being recorded and kept over here for their instruction. This period of post evolution of perfection or innocence, as it sometimes is called because of the absence of sin, was characterized by two divine institutions. Number one, institution of evolution and institution of marriage. By planting the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden of garden and banning its fruit, God made the evolution issue clear, obedience or disobedience to God. Precedence in marriage also was lucid, just as God created Adam, the ruler of the world, God also gave him authority over Isha, that is the first woman. The fall of man involved human failure in each divine institution. Both the man and the woman ate the forbidden fruit, violating the evolution issue by succumbing, by succumbing to Satan. The woman also disregarded the authority of her husband, and the man, in accepting the fruit from the hand of his wife, defaulted in the access of his authority over her. After the fall, God sustained the institution of volition by holding the man and woman responsible for their decisions. In Genesis 3, 11 through 19, he upheld the institution of marriage by reconfirming the husband's role over the life, over the wife. That's why husband is called the head of the family and is the one who is responsible for each and every decision. Even with the changes that resulted from the fall, the perpetuation of the divine institutions is an early example of continuity from one period of biblical history to the next. Neither human perfection, perfect environment, divine warnings, nor the divine institutions then in effect keep man from the original sin. Human volition is truly free. Furthermore, vital lessons from the age of positive evolution still apply to us today. For certain events in the garden illustrate and eliminate principles found in church age doctrine. For example, we see that neither perfect environment nor the perfect ideal marriage can solve man's most basic problems which are solved by the grace of God. And the age of negative evolution, to give a preview, began with the fall of man. Adam and the woman were now imperfect outside the Garden of Eden. Both were believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who revealed himself as the seed of woman as told in Genesis 3.15. As a believer, the woman was called Eve, mother of all living, in recognition of woman's role in the coming of the promised Savior, as told in Genesis 3.20, Isaiah 7.14, Matthew 1.22-23, and 1 Timothy, that is the first Timothy, chapter 2, verses 15. At the moment of the original sin, Adam and Eve 
lost to the status of perfection. They become spiritually dead, separated from God, and totally incapable of relationship with Him, as told in Genesis 2, 17 and 3, 8. Originally trichotomous with body, soul, and spirit, Adam and Eve became dichotomous only body and soul. Faith in Lord Jesus Christ brought regeneration, which restored the human spirit, making them trichotomous again. The human spirit has always been essential for a relationship with God, as told in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Throughout human history, with the humanity of Christ as the only expectation, exception every descendant of adam and eve is born dichotomy dichotomous and remains spiritually dead until he personally believes in the lord jesus christ as told in john 3 18 in all dispensations everyone who believes in the lord jesus christ becomes at that moment regenerated and trichotomous possessing body soul and human spirit as told in first Thessalonians 5 23 no canon of scripture existed in the age of negative evolution god revealed himself to man through dreams visions angelic appearances and as in the garden of eden through direct physical manifestations in the form of theophanies which is pre-incarnate appearances of lord jesus christ known as theophanies spiritual authority was vested in the head of the family who held the family priesthood through the system of authority God's revealed truth was communicated to the human race orally and visually in rituals that included holidays and animal sacrifices of Genesis 321 4 4 and Genesis 820 the historical record of this period is found in Genesis 3 7 to 1132 again written retro retrospectively by Moses by the divine inspiration of Lord God the Holy Spirit no human missionary agency was required apart from individual believers carrying the water of God to people in their periphery. The gospel existed in the form of promises of the coming Messiah, who was depicted in the animal sacrifices as told in Genesis 3.15. The innocent judged in place of the guilty. Since the fall of man, the means of salvation in every dispensation has always been faith alone in Christ alone, as revealed in the terror of Romans 4, 1 through 16, Galatians 3, 6 through 9, and Galatians 3, 26. And this is the region where Abraham also believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We have that passage of Romans 4. The period of negative evolution began with one language, one race, and one culture. But none of this anthropological unites solved problems in human relationships or in man's relationship with God. Furthermore, a third divine institution, the family, was added to volition and marriage, but neither parental authority nor familial bonds nor the family priesthood prevented the first murder in which Cain killed his brother Evil. Brother Abel. Evil ran rampant during the age of negative evolution as told in Genesis 6, 1 through 7 and God took severe measures to prevent the human race from destroying itself. The universal flood spread spared only the family of Noah and one family of believers had, that had remained true to God's plan. After the flood, God reiterated his blessings and encouragement given in the garden to be fruitful and multiply. But with certain changes instituted concerning food, Genesis 9-3 comparison of Genesis 1-29-30 and be fruitful and multiply as such as told in Genesis 9-1 in comparison with 1-28. Here was yet another early distinction, or early instance of change against a background of continuity from Noah's son sprang three groups of Gentiles, the descendants of Sham, Ham, and Japheth, which eventually became differentiated nations and races, as told in Genesis 10:32. Following the flood, yet another evil trend culminated at the Tower of Babel, as told in Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Their fallen man presumed that he could reach into heaven through his own ability and concreted effort. That's what even the religion heads are following today. They are considering that their concrete effort will lead them to heaven which is not all possible human achievements often are admirable they have an evil effect however when man's apparent brilliance obscures the reality of his total separation from God or supplants the grace of God as the one real solution to basic human problems at Babel therefore God restrained man's capacity for evil God had promised after the flood that never again would he curse the ground on account of man as told in Genesis 8 20, 20, 20 and 22 verses 20 through 22 verses and Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 through 17 which is a sign of a rainbow wherein Zachary and I considers how, un how unrealistic it is that Bible gives no scientific evidence about the rainbow which is a sign of a covenant for God not to destroy but he destroys with not with water again but with fire an unalterable covenant that remains in effect through all generations as part of the continuity the runs through all the dispensations true to his own covenant God did not make widespread changes in nature as at the fall and in the flood. This time he dealt with evil by confusing mankind's language, effectively separating the human race into groups that could not easily communicate with one another. Thus God established the fourth divine institution, the nation, the national entity. He 
scattered humankind so boundaries between peoples would limit the range of any expression of human arrogance and would impede the spread of evil as told in Genesis 11 and 8. Even today, internationalism or the movement or to unify the world under one government leads itself to evil on a grand scale and opposes the plan of God. Paul addresses to the Athenians establishes this principle for the church age, allowing Christians to apply this ancient lesson from Babel to the current dispensation. Paul emphasizes that God's purpose in separating the nations and setting the boundaries of their habitation is that they should seek God rather than be inordinately impressed with the achievements of human genius, which Paul noted in the philosophy, sculpture, and poetry of the Greeks as told in Acts 17.26-27 in comparison with 17.21, 17.23, and 17.28. And these things we shall continue tomorrow, particularly the Jewish patriarchs of the age of the dispensation of the Gentiles and then lead on to the dispensation of the Israel. Because when Zachariah is claiming that he can know the better things by telling that I have learned, I have proved, it's not at all possible. The depth of the context of the subject of positive evolution and then negative evolution and then the Jewish patriarchs should give in depth of information not only to such kind of an unbeliever because who is dichotomy in nature, who doesn't understand the things of Bible doctrine, but rather only the gospel which could be benefited for him. But if he has a year of understanding, let him hear those things which I have read in this tape so that they can understand and the truth can make them to believe only the incarnate person, the theophany of all time, retrospectively returned by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through Moses, so that believing upon him, you shall be saved. And these things we shall continue tomorrow, for the closing moments have been given to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, that believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall have the things which are essential for their eternal destiny. You shall, if you have Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you have been saved. You shall have eternal life. If you do not believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, then you do not have your eternal life. The choice is yours. The ball is in your court. Whichever decision you take, it is left to you. But we are here to tell, believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And we shall look into tomorrow, the dispensation of the Gentiles, follow the dispensation of the Israel, so that Zachariah can learn these things, even as such the teachers who are listening to this tape, or pastors or believers can learn because you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege that are given to us to our fellowship with the word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, and let us the things that are going to, as we have studied these things, and make it as also a blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.